Hello everyone. Welcome to our final lesson in the formula and calculations topic, which is combining triangles. So beginning with our starter questions, these cover both the triangles we've covered so far. So our N equals M over GFM triangle and our N equals CB triangle. You need to make sure you're definitely happy with all of this content before going on with today's lesson. So if you're unsure at all, have a look back over your notes or the previous lessons which are on the Microsoft Teams and files. If you're still unsure, give me a wee email and I'll run through things with you. Now a really important point to note is that you need to make sure you're happy with your formula rules, which is your prefix and valency rule. So if you're not happy with that, go back and look at that first. And make sure you're happy with all of your units for mass, volume, concentration. So if you want to pause here, have a wee go at the starter questions. The answers will be up in a wee sec. Okay, so here are answers for our starter questions. If you're unsure about how we got any of these, just let me know. I can run through it with you. Okay, so for today's lesson, we're learning about calculations that combine both of our triangles. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to apply your knowledge of mass and concentration to solve challenging problems. And it's important to note at this point that this is some of the most challenging calculations that you'll cover within chemistry. It is quite difficult work, so please don't worry if it takes you a couple of times running through this before you're happy with it. So let's just revise through everything that we've covered so far and everything that you need to know for this lesson. So we've identified two relationships which allow us to calculate the number of moles. The first is our N equals M over GFM, where M is mass and GFM is our gram formula mass. The second is N equals CV, where C is concentration and V is volume. Now remember we've represented these in the below triangles. Okay, it's quite a good idea to remember these triangles, it makes it a bit easier to work through. So what we can see from our triangles is that they both contain N for number of moles. So that means that we can now combine these together within calculations. If you're able to calculate your number of moles using one triangle, you can then use that value within the second triangle. And it allows us to combine and bring everything that we've covered together. So as you can see here, both the N values in each triangle can relate to each other. Okay, so when it comes to combining our triangles and calculations, there are a couple of important steps that we need to follow in a particular order in order to make sure we're getting everything done correctly. So we'll run through these first of all, make sure we're happy with the steps and then we'll do some examples and put these steps into practice. So first things first, we write down what we already know. So we look at the question and write down all the information that that gives us that we can use in our calculation. Once we have done that, we calculate the GFM of our compound. Now, if the formula of the compound is given to you, you can just use that to calculate your GFM, no problem. But if they've only given you the name of the compound, then you need to write the formula first before we can calculate the GFM. Once we've done that, we need to then identify which triangle we're going to use first. Now, the, there must be two known values in your triangle before you can use it in the calculation. So once you've written down everything that you know and you've calculated the GFM, one of your triangles will have two known values and we identify that as the one we're going to use first. Once we've identified that triangle, we can then use it to calculate our number of moles. Now in our final step, we can use the number of moles we've worked out in one triangle and our second triangle to work out what we're looking for. So there's five steps to follow. Write down what you know, calculate your GFM, identify which triangle to use, so look at which one has two values already known, calculate our number of moles, and then use that number of moles to calculate the unknown. Now that seems like quite a lot of steps, but once you see it in practice, it will start to make sense. So first things first, if you pause here and copy down the steps, we'll then look at a few examples and see it in practice. 
So let's look at example number one. Calculate the concentration of solution produced when 4 grams of sodium hydroxide, that's NaOH is the formula, is dissolved in 0 0.5 litres of water. So step one is to write down what we already know. Now it's a good idea to split your page into two so that you can keep both triangles separate. So from the question we can see that the mass is 4 grams and the volume is 0 0.5 litres. That's all the information we're given. We don't know anything else. So we've written down everything we know so far. Now our second step is to work out the GFM and remember you can always do this if you have the formula or the name. In this case we have the formula so we can go through our steps. We've got one sodium, one oxygen and one hydrogen and if we add the mass of all them together we get our gram formula mass, our GFM is 40 grams. Now that we've worked that out we can add it to our top values. Now our third step is to identify which triangle we want to use first. Now remember you're looking for the triangle that has two known values. What we can see here is that in our NM GFM triangle we know the mass and we know the gram formula mass so we can use this triangle first. That means we can work out our number of moles. So we see that N is equal to M over GFM. That's going to be equal to 4 divided by 40. And so we've worked out we've got 0 0.1 moles. Now this can then be replaced as the N value in both of our triangles. So that means we now know that our number of moles is 0 0.1. Now if you look on our, at our second triangle, we now have two known values. We've worked out that our number of moles is 0 0.1. And the question told us that the volume was 0 0.5 litres. So this is now going to allow us to calculate our concentration. So we know that C is equal to N over V. C will be equal to 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.5. So our concentration will be 0 0.2 moles per litre. And if we just pause there and copy this example down into our notes. Let's now look at example number two. Calculate what mass of CaCl2 would need to be dissolved in 200 centimetres cubed of water to create a 1.5 mole per litre solution. So the first thing we do, split our page in half and write down what we know. So from the question, we've got information on the concentration, which is 1.5 moles per litre. And we've got information on our volume. Now the volume given to us is 200 centimetres cubed. Remember you need to convert that to litres. So we divide it by a thousand and we know that our volume is 0 0.2 litres. Our next step is to work out our GFM. We've got a formula of CaCl2. We've got one calcium and two chlorine. So if we add the mass of that together we get a GFM of 111 grams and we can add that to what we know. Our third step now is to look and see which triangle we use first. So again we're looking at the triangle which has two known values. This time it's our N equals CV triangle. We know our concentration and our volume so we can now work out our number of moles. So N is equal to C times V which is going to be 1.5 times 0 0.2 and so we've worked out that our number of moles is 0 0.75 and we can replace that with our question mark up the top as we now know our number of moles is 0 0.75. Now our very final step here is to calculate what we're asked to. So the question asks us to calculate the mass of calcium chloride. We now have a number of moles and a GFM so we can do this. So our mass is equal to N times GFM, that's 0 0.75 times 111, our mass will be 83.25 grams. Again, if you'd like to pause here, you can copy this example down.
Now on to our final example. We're asked to calculate the concentration of solution produced when 319 grams of copper 2 sulphate is dissolved in 250 millilitres of water. As before, we write down what we know first. We can see the mass is 319 grams, the volume is 250 millilitres of water. We can convert that into litres by dividing by a thousand, so our volume is 0 0.25 litres. Now our next step is to calculate our GFM. In this instance we do not have a formula but we've got the name of our compound. So what we need to do first is write our formula. Our compound is copper 2 sulphate. There are no prefixes and so we're using our valency rule here. Now we can see from the name sulphate as it ends in 8 it's a group ion and which we find that in page 8 of our data booklet. So for our symbols, we've got Cu for copper, SO4 for sulphate. For our valencies, we can see the valency of copper is 2 due to the Roman numerals in the brackets. We find the valency of sulphate in our data booklet as well, also 2. Swap them over. We can divide that down to 1 and 1. And we now have Cu SO4 as our formula. Now that we've worked that out, we can use that to calculate our GFM. So we have one copper and a mass of 63.5, one sulphur and four oxygen. Now if we add that all together, our GFM is 159.5 grams and we can pop that up the top. Now our third step is to identify which triangle to use. So we're looking for which one has two known values. And we can see it as our N equals M over GFM triangle. So that's what we're going to use to work out our number of moles. We've got N equals M over GFM. That's 319 divided by 159.5. That means we've got 2 moles of solute. And we can now replace that up the top. Now our final step is to work out what we're asked to. The question asks us to calculate the concentration and that is our unknown. We now have both the number of moles and the volume so we can do this. C equals N over V. That's 2 divided by 0 0.25 which tells us our concentration is 8 moles per litre. And so if you now want to just copy down the final example. Now for our last exercise here, there are only five questions and that is because every question is worth three marks. Now I'll just run down a breakdown of where you would get those marks from. One mark will generally come from calculating the GFM. The second mark will come from calculating your number of moles and the third and final mark will come from calculating your unknown that you're asked to in the question. Now if you make a mistake in one of those steps, but you carry that mistake through, there's still a chance that you can get two out of the three marks. So for example, if you make a mistake in your GFM, but you do the rest of the work incorrectly, you'll still get two out of three marks. Now, like I said at the start of the lesson, this is one of the more difficult calculations that you'll cover. Okay, so please don't worry if it takes a bit of time to get used to. So there are five questions here. If you give them a go and send them to me for marking, if you're unsure at all, give me an email, I'll talk you through it, but otherwise this is the last lesson in the formula and calculations topic, so we'll now just move on to a fair bit of revision before moving on to our next topic. So just to confirm what we should have learned this lesson, we were learning about concentration of solutions and we should now be able to apply our knowledge of mass and concentration to solve challenging problems.